I think this is the most crucial moment or one of the most crucial moments in crypto and digital assets. And it really does come down to controlling the narrative. And what I'm talking about is there was a press conference. This was a couple of days ago. This is uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And he did a nice, it, he actually talked for about 10 minutes and uh, other people in his group talked for the other uh, 20 or so. But he, he talked about CBDCs, just how dangerous they are. And the first four minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highly encourage you to watch the whole thing. I'm going to link this in the description. The first four minutes, it just gives you like a rundown of what's going on and, 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 and the bank issues and the problems with, with the Fed Reserve as they were raising the rates and how people were getting bailed out and how the FDIC insurance was really paid by taxpayer money and not by anybody else, which is totally correct. But And he just kind of catches up in a very simplified way. And then he gets to talk about CBDCs. And before we, we go into it, let me just say this. This is like a huge relief just to hear somebody in power talk about CBDCs and the danger. Because when we talk about it and we talk to our families and things like that, they're like, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin's going to be great. And digital assets, sure, right? And CBDCs, yeah, it's going to take over the world. But when you have somebody from the governor of Florida in the United States are talking about, look, like, look, we need to really control this because if we give them more power, you don't know what's going to happen. So I'm going to have you take a listen to it and just tell me in the comment section if you just feel like a, a great sigh of relief when someone else says it and you don't have to keep shouting from the uh, rooftop. So just take a listen to this. No, we cannot have that happening. And so that's why we're here today, because we've seen a lot of mismanagement uh, from the economic central planners. It's just by nature. You cannot do this effectively without there being major costs uh, to pay. And so some want to increase power to these organizations such as the Federal Reserve. And so last year, President Biden issued an executive order to explore the creation of a U.S. central bank digital currency, effectively converting the dollar into a centralized digital currency. And this is different than things like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. A centralized digital currency is directly controlled and issued uh, to, uh, by the government to consumers. And it provides the government with a direct view of all consumer activities. And so this is something that is being proposed as somehow being environmentally sustainable, a uh, way to increase access to consumers who lack the means to join a traditional bank. But as we've come to learn, uh, any way they can get into society uh, to exercise their agenda, they will do it. So what the central bank digital currency is all about is surveilling Americans and controlling behavior of Americans. And how do we know? Because we've seen this happen in other parts of the world. Look at no further than China to see the impacts of centralized digital currency. The People's Bank of China uses its central bank to monitor citizen behavior, allowing for the surveillance of spending habits and to cut off access to goods and services. You also see things in the uh, Bahamas where they've instituted caps on CBDC holdings and transactions in Nigeria, central bank capped ATM withdrawals to forcibly push the use of their digital currency in lieu of physical currency. And I don't even need to think here, what are they going to want to do? These ESG factors, you go and buy gasoline. If you bought too much gasoline, they just won't allow you to use this to make a transaction. Who knows whether they would let you buy a firearm or things that they disapprove of. And so you're isn't that great to not have to put all this information in and just go, look, if you don't want to believe me. Just take a look at the governor from Florida as he talks about the slippery slope that we could slide down as far as CBDCs. And, uh, and a couple of things. Remember, first of all, was that he talked specifically, he said, Bitcoin, we're not talking about crypto, digital assets. We're talking about a central bank digital currency. And the second thing is he didn't mention FedNow. And we talked about FedNow in a video we did a couple of days ago, where it's all about instant payments. There is a huge difference between instant payments from the Federal Reserve to a central bank digital currency and how you can use programmable money to shut things off. Now, of course, yes, you can shut things off anywhere you want to. We talked about this in, in the video itself, but I got to tell you, it just feels like it's like, like a huge weight off, off, uh, up on my shoulders. I think a lot of people, when you have somebody just come down and go, look, this is a problem. So hopefully 
the Fed will stop at Fed now, but you know it's gonna it's gonna move forward, and that's why it's important that we talk about these things and control the narrative. Now, the next part here, I will just uh, say that uh, some people love Charles Hoskinson and some people despise Charles Hoskinson. Some people love Cardano, hate Cardano. I don't care where you're at. Me personally, I like Cardano. I got a bunch of it and uh, I'm very biased and I have a, uh, a stake pool. I'm a stake pool operator under D News. Link in the description, you want a stake instead of you know, taking it off the exchanges. But love him or hate him, or as Charles Hoskinson, He's got a great point here, and this is about a minute or so. And this is important. When I talk about controlling the narrative right now, just take a listen. This is what everybody should be talking about. And now I can really see a path for it. So just take a listen. This is about a minute and a half. Recently, uh, Balaji got the point. He said, it reminds me a bit of the early 1900s. In 1910, you still had these nine royals meeting. The world of princes was still around and seemingly immortal. And he got the point that the vast majority of them got knocked off uh, within 10 years. Why? Uh, because things that seem permanent and stable, they change quickly. And it's something that people don't want to admit. But then after the fact, they, they say, oh, well, that was obvious. When I was still the CEO of Ethereum many years ago, in a past life, uh, I tried to get a Credit Suisse account uh, when we were in uh, Switzerland, because, you know, it was 2014. And the Credit Suisse people said, oh, uh, too dangerous with crypto. We couldn't possibly consider it would be so unstable and so so terrible. And we we have a reputation to protect. You know, we're 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 here for the long term. We've been here for over 150 years, and we couldn't embrace this crypto thing. And lo and behold, who's buying Credit Suisse UBS? Only if the Swiss government bails them out. You see, the banking system in general is falling apart. It's falling apart predictably so because it's always been a Ponzi scheme. So again, love them or hate them, these are the things that we need to hear and people who don't believe that the traditional banking system is just fine and dandy need to also hear. So again, it's all about pushing the narrative, controlling the narrative, and the people that are the best at that are usually the winners. Just look at politicians. And then uh, also, just real quick, when he talks about banking and banking sectors, I don't believe that uh, the issues that are going on with the banking are just relegated to just these signature and uh, Silicon Valley Bank and uh, First Federal or, or First Republic. Uh, and then, of course, Credit Suisse goes down because once you have these big banks go down, there's a little bit of contagion. Saudi National Bank lost over a billion dollars on the, on the Credit Suisse investment. And this is just Tuesday. And remember, this just happened on Sunday. So I think there's more dominoes to fall. So this is an important time. And why I think we're seeing a major influx into Bitcoin, mostly Bitcoin, in the crypto digital assets, because people are scared. They don't know where to put their money. They don't know if it's going to be actually be insured. It's a confidence game. And that confidence is eroding rapidly. And then also, before we move on to the negative part of controlling the narrative, I, I will just say this, as far as like the narrative, again, this was a tweet. Actually, it started out with, uh, with Bryson. And Bryson, he is a Twitch streamer. I follow him on uh, Twitter for Web3 type of things. And uh, he just talked about, look, uh, there's some things we need to talk about as far as NFTs. And he just said we should you know, change the way that we talk about them. And then a uh, gentleman, or person, I don't know, Ragnar Redmayne, who is the creator of Battle Viking, said, this is great, but don't even, we don't even need to call it an NFT. If players call it a skin and get all the benefits of NFT ownership, you avoid a lot of the current negative perception that people have with NFTs. And it got me thinking. It got me thinking about the 2020 presidential election. And if you haven't been around, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It's what, what it really came down to was this. There was a big issue with the election. We're talking about um, insurance, health insurance. And this was, this was a big sticking point. The Democrats came out and they talked about socialized medicine. And here in the States, I don't know where you're at. If you're in Europe, you're like, that sounds good. But here in the States, any kind of word about socialized is like the worst word of all time. So when they said socialized medicine, and they did a bunch of polls, it just kind of just tanked. But then when they started to talk about Medicare for all, then all of a sudden the approval rating went through the roof. So it's all about the narrative and what you call it. So me personally, when I start thinking about these, you know, the gamers and the NFTs, I understand there's different aspects of things they don't like. I get it. But if we stop calling it NFTs, why don't we just call it what it is, like Web3 skins or Web3 upgrades or Web3 weapons or whatever else it is, or what, whatever you can talk about. But when we call things NFTs, I think there's a negative connotation with that 
moving forward. Again, controlling the narrative. That's why I'm going to ask for you. What do you think we should call it? Put that down in, in, there's, uh, in the comment section because maybe we should move forward. We'll just stop and call them NFTs. Now, that's the positive part is controlling the negative. Here's the negative part. This is Kevin O'Leary. You know him. And uh, everybody loved this guy when he was all on board with crypto, right? But uh, there's been proof that he negatively talks about things and uh, then buys them behind the scenes because he pumps his bags. And that's a proven fact. Go watch Squawk Box and CNBC where he talked about how he didn't do anything with Bitcoin. And then years later, uh, he messed up the time frame. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is because there was a, an article and it, it came down to, this was in finance, uh, Yahoo Finance. And it was on March 20th and it was meltdown to zero. Kevin O'Leary said there's a hundred percent chance of a crypto debacle. And I read this and I'm like, okay, let's see what he has to say. And he says, if you're asking me if there, will there be another meltdown to zero? Absolutely. 100%. He says it will happen and it'll keep happening over and over again. And then, uh, which I got, I got to be honest with you right here. Uh, he might be Meltdown to zero is a little bit crazy, but uh, as far as problems in the crypto sector, he's right. <laughs> there is going to be problems. There is going to be hacks. There is going to be issues because it's a it's a young industry. I can't deny that part, but going to zero, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but uh, maybe he's talking about uh, the people that promote him, FTX. And then he says here, all the unregulated exchanges are having massive outflows right now. The smart money has got the joke. They saw what happened in FTX. They're not sitting around for an explanation. And I just responded back on Twitter. I go, well, of course there is an outflow because people realize that they can do this thing, which is self-custody, which is what we talk about on Dan Teaches Crypto. And, uh, you know, I use a ledger. It's very simple. And you can't do that in the banks. And that's what is, I think, uh, moving people into the crypto space who are scared about where the money actually is. So with this one, I just started to think about it. I'm like, I know I've heard this before. I know it. And then I look back and what he's talking about, uh, uh, the issue with there's a meltdown, everything going to zero. This was actually from Kitco News. This was Kitco News, meltdown to zero, 100% happened. But it was two months ago. I know it's, first of all, I know it's a long time ago because it says two months ago. And then, of course, uh, Dave Lynn, he's even with Kitco News anymore. He has on YouTube channel. You should check it out. It's very interesting. But uh, with this one, I was like, why are they dragging this up two months ago to talk. I don't know if it's a slow news day or what, but again, I think there's some people out there that are controlling the narrative. So they'll bring this up. Do we care what Kevin O'Leary says in the crypto space? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, a lot of people who watch Shark Tank and believe in Kevin O'Leary for whatever reason, uh, they're going to hit this narrative and be like, oh, that sounds reasonable and off you go. So to me, I just think there's something behind the scenes that are happening that people are trying to control this, which will lead me to my last point. It's from Nick Carter. And he says, fun fact, the man ultimately responsible for choke point 1.0 was FDIC chairman Marty Gruenberg, who served from 2012 to 2018. And he says, there's also choke point 2.0. And guess who's a responsible for that? Marty Gruenberg. And I said, what? So I took a look at uh, the list of all the FDIC chairs. And uh, that goes all the way back to the 50s and 60s. But if you scroll up, you go, oh, there's Marty, Martin Gruenberg. He served from... 2005 to 2006. If you scroll up one more, there he is again, July 9th, 2011 to 2012. And then he's back again, February 5th, 2023. So there are people who are trying to control this narrative and they are in high places. So there is the good and the bad. And that's why I think this is a critical time for digital assets. And we should be sharing this information as best as we can to save as many people as we can. And that's it for for that piece. Just know that uh, this is going to be an interesting uh, week because we've got uh, the FOMC meeting where we're going to see if we're going to raise rates. This is going to be tomorrow, uh, March 22nd. And right now people are saying it's about a 79% chance because uh, the current target rate is 450 to 475. The thing is about an, almost an 80% chance we're going to see a 25 basis point hike, which is interesting because we thought it would be 50 and it was like about a 40, 60 split. Now, nobody's even talking about it. And actually, 21% of people are saying that there's going to be no rate increases, which I think is crazy. But uh, if it does, watch the market explode. If it goes 50 points, watch the market crumble. And if it goes to 475, watch nothing absolutely happen. So play that as you will in your investments, but I can't give investment advice and that's it. So look, 
that is it for today. Also know that on Thursday, if you're in Puerto Rico, we're going to be at the uh, Smokehouse doing a crypto meetup from 4 to 7 p.m. So I'll make the announcement tomorrow as well. But that is it for today. So look, went a little bit long, but there's it's important times, I think. So that is it for today. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, all that good stuff. But that's it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.